Hey guys, Nick with CC Minis here, and recently I was challenged by the one who makes things. That's, uh, Carl. Carl from Carl Makes Things. Hi there, I'm Carl, and I run the channel Carl Makes Things. Um, Nick has been gracious enough to let me kind of slide into this video and introduce myself. Um, I'm kind of the other half of this little project that we're doing. Um, and I run a channel that's basically mostly miniatures painting, but also a lot of other weird stuff. I do some terrain building. I do um, you know, some other digital art on the side, which I'm probably going to record and share. Um, my channel is all about teaching people useful things um, and trying to get as much information as I can that's useful into a video as possible. Um, so if you're interested in seeing some of my work like you've seen here, um, come check me out. Carl is another great mini painting YouTuber who does tutorials on painting as well as how to build terrain. He has this crazy technique using a makeup sponge where he builds up paint layer by layer, um, even really hard colors. It works really well. Seriously, go check him out. He challenged me to paint the same thing as him, something that neither of us have done before, a bust. We decided on a character from Deuce X named Alex Jensen. Uh, to be honest, I'm unfamiliar with the game, but this dude looks pretty badass. I'm getting some major 90s action hero vibes here, all mixed with a sweet cyberpunk aesthetic. I mean, what's not to love? We found a free STL file online, link is in the description. We both printed him up and gave ourselves just six hours, broken up into three two-hour blocks, to paint it to the best of our abilities. In addition to the challenge, I also recently purchased a set of the Pro Acro line, so I'm going to be giving them a try, and I will go over my thoughts on the paint line so far throughout the video. My plan for the first two hours is basically just to get all of the, uh, the base coats done, and I plan on using a wet blend for at least most of them. I started out with my standard Zenithal Prime, uh, black primer base with white Liquitex ink uh, sprayed above it. Per the challenge, we only wanted to consider time painting as the two hours, so any priming and zenithal work was not considered part of that. I started with the shoulder pads. After looking at some reference photos of Alex, I believe the shoulder pads are black leather, so I wanted to really push the contrast here. I want to use the darkest paint in the Pro Acro line and then have some harsh, almost white highlights on the ridges of the leather. The first step to achieve this is laying down a nice wet blend of dark warm gray and charcoal black to lay out where I want the shadows and midtones to be. While the shoulder pads are drying, I start to dig into the green fabric sections of Alex Jensen's outfit. I'm unsure of what material these are exactly, um, but they look like fabric stretched over some form of armor in the photos that I found online. Similar to the leather I laid down, I started with a wet blend base coat of the camo green and coal black, leaning towards the green where I want the midtones and highlights to be. My original goal was to get all the base coating done, so my next step was to base coat all the neck armor stuff Alex has. Um, I don't really know what material this is from the reference photos, so I'm just going to do a coat of dark warm gray here. Enough time has passed and I'm confident that the shoulder pads are completely dry. So I take out some bright warm gray and start laying down the major highlight areas on the shoulders. Black leather is an interesting material to paint due to leather, especially nice taking care of leather like Alex has, having a satin and sometimes even gloss finish in real life. Dark satin and gloss objects naturally have very stark and bright highlights, which can be hard to translate into a miniature painting. Looking at some reference photos, I focus my highlights along the edges of the leather, as well as any flat planes that are perpendicular to the model. This will act as a nice rim light when taking the final photos. Across the model, there were a few various details left unbase coated, so I spent some time hitting those. There's a little belt thingy that is red, a few little straps under Alex's chest piece that needs some dark gray, and lastly a couple more green spots scattered across his back. Overall, I'm happy with what I've been able to lay down in just two hours. 
Some of the base coats have gotten some great contrast already, and I can already see where to go from here. I am struggling a bit with the monotony of the bust, however. The majority of the character is warm colors, and I'm not really sure how to show the differences in different materials since the colors are so close to each other. My only real goal for the second block of two hours is to get as much done on the head as possible. Hopefully I can finish the face and get through the hair as well. If I have more time at the end to work on the body more, fantastic. To do the skin tone, I'm going to rely on old, faithful, traditional painting color palette, which is a flesh tone, a blue for the shadows, and red for the highlights. I have to say that I've been super impressed with Pro Acryl in this area. They only have one skin tone, but it works really nicely when you mix it well with other colors. For shadows, I am adding in a bit of blue and focusing under the cheekbones and the chin. And then for highlights, I add in a bit of bright ivory to punch up the brightness and some red, which gives a little life to the cheeks, lips, and nose. And adding a second thin coat of the skin tone acts immediately as a great mid-tone. Next up is blocking in the hair. I used the charcoal black here and used a reference for Alex's face to get the correct areas painted black. After everything was blocked in, I went back in and added some highlights with dark warm gray. At this point, the whole darn model is warm, so I wanted to take the glasses and make them a much, much cooler color. I chose purple. This way, there's some nice contrast, which will, in theory, help to draw the viewer's eyes towards the face. I started out with some Pro Acro Purple, but it really looked flat to me and I was not very happy with how it turned out on its own. It needs more contrast, man. I added in some black to my purple on the palette and hit the middle with that. I added those on the top and bottom of the rims as well as a couple dots towards the center of each frame. Leaning a little bit up as if there's lights above him glinting off his sunglasses. The glasses still needed a little bit more pop though, so I added a black rim around them, separating the glasses further from the flesh tone. At this point, I was pretty happy with the head, so I turned my attention back to the body. I wanted to add in some more contrast to the green fabric-y armor things, so I added in a bit more camo green with a bright ivory to push the highlights, using some simple edge highlights. Then I mixed in even more bright ivory and hit the edges that I really wanted to be bright. Liking how the edge highlighting was working, I decided to do the same throughout the model. For the upper body armor, neck armor thing, I did the highlighting with bright warm gray again, going back over the areas that I wanted to be brighter more than once to build opacity. Even with the highlights, I wanted there to be a bit more contrast to the upper armor as it was still looking very samey. So I hit the area around the neck with some dark warm gray and feathered it out so it's darker the more parallel the armor is to the imaginary overhead light source. At this point, I have all the base coating and basic highlights done, and I decided to put it together to make sure the head and the body work well with one another. And you know what? I think it looks pretty good, but I want to put some more of the contrast in the glasses and generally rework the imaginary world that is being reflected back at us. I'm imagining a large open room that is fairly dark, but it has some bright floors lit up by a couple of overhead lights. The rest of my time in this block was generally spent noodling around touching up some areas that may have gotten some of the wrong paint or pushing values back and forth, but really no groundbreaking stuff. One thing of note though is I added a small glaze of Leho Gaming Purple to the glasses to cool the hue down a little bit. At this point in time I was really happy with how this was looking. The edge highlighting was working really well and I was starting to feel good about the material distinctions that I was worried about during the first block of time. I was also really pleased with how the skin tones turned out, and even the reflection in Alex's glasses was looking pretty cool. I snapped a photo and loaded up Discord to send Carl a picture of my progress so far, feeling pretty darn good about how it's been turning out. Then Carl dropped a bomb on me. He finished up his last two hours, and he did something that we had joked about while talking about the challenge, and oh my god, he did it well. Carl did this crazy OSL in two hours. I could not believe it. I mean, look at how incredible his bus turned out. He managed to capture two different light sources, purple from the left and yellow from the right, bisecting the model and casts of competing light. 
You can even tell how much brighter the primary yellow light is wrapping around the front and back armor. Looking at the complexity of Carl's finished bust compared to my current whip, I knew what I had to do. Completely steal Carl's idea and attempt to do OSL for the first time in my life. This is going to sound crazy, and it probably is, at least a little bit, but I never tried this technique before, and honestly, it's because I was scared. I was worried that I couldn't do it well, and by that, that would mean that I wasn't a good mini artist. Again, crazy. But there is a crude logic at work here, even though it's flawed. You see, in my head, it was kind of like an equation. Good OSL means good painted mini means good mini painting artist, right? So the flawed logic was that the opposite was also true. Bad OSL means bad painted mini means bad mini artist. But I mean, that's a bunch of bullshit. So I never really tried because if I tried and failed, that would mean I would be bad mini artist as opposed to good mini artist that's practicing. We set unrealistic expectations of ourselves all the time. How well we should be able to paint something how great something needs to look in the end, or how we're afraid that our work might be compared to others that we see on social media. And really, it's just silly, and we are doing ourselves a huge disservice. These thoughts and expectations in no way make us better at our hobbies, and in fact, they keep us from exploring them. I have been sitting on a bus now that I picked up at Adepticon 2018. <sighs> simpler times. It's this bust of a cool Rosie the River type gal with a giant robot arm, but I haven't even touched her yet because I've been worried that I wouldn't be able to live up to the expectations I've put on myself. But now that I've given OSL and really busts for that matter a try, I'm really revved up to finally paint her. And it, right now I'm planning on painting her up for crystal brush. Well, whenever that happens again. I initially planned on having the recesses of this plinth glow with a yellow light, but Wow, I tried that, and there's just no way I could do that with the amount of time I have left. It would require some major masking work, so I repainted the entire thing black, except for the top. And now I'm just going to have the top glow, which is way easier. Before this two hour time block, I spent a long time researching how to do OSL. Well, a couple hours at least. And it turns out that's really not the beast that I'd made it out to be in my head. Basically, you need the light to cast from the object onto the model in a straight line. This was very easy for this model as I could just tip the bust up, so I was essentially looking at it from below, like a reverse zenithal, and then paint the spots that I see. The second major rule is that the further away any part of the model is from the light source, the less bright that needs to be. To make sure I followed both rules, I used a couple different colors to pre-light my glow. Ivory, bright ivory, and white. The further away from the plinth the part I'm painting is, the less bright of the highlight I need to use. I decided to do a uh, yellow light after looking through some Deuce X artwork. This works really well with the pre-highlighting I'm doing and these bright colors. Once I'm done mapping out these highlights, I can go back in with the yellow and glaze in the color as many times as I need until I'm happy with the saturation. I went ahead and threw some yellow highlights into the face and the hair, even though it's kind of breaking rule number two. I hope these little glints of light will draw the viewer's eyes in, even though physically I don't think the light would be able to hit this part. On Alex, I want all the highlighted areas to be bright saturated yellow, so I added in some Vallejo glaze medium into Pro Curl yellow, um, but to be honest, I'm not sure if the glaze medium is really needed. Pro Acryl does have very good coverage for yellow, but at the end of the day, it's still yellow, so I can glaze with it. I added the yellow to the plinth as well, making sure to leave a bit of bright white towards the center. For OSL, you should always make sure that the light source has at least a little bit of white to it to really sell the effect. And that's really all there is to painting the model. Here's some, uh, here's some final photos. I really hope you like how this turned out. Well, that's it guys. This was my first mini challenge, my first bust, my first time working with another YouTuber, and my first time doing OSL. 
and I gotta say, it was all a fantastic experience. I really hope that you enjoyed the process too, it was really fun to make this one. Have you ever collaborated with another mini painter, like a group project? If so, let me know about it in the comments, I'm really interested to hear what other people have done. Don't forget to do the whole like and subscribe stuff, and most importantly, go check out Carl's work. I'll put a video right here, and put a link in the description to his channel, and go check him out, he's really good. You'll learn a lot from him. Well, till next time, stay healthy and take care.